Hey everyone, I'm Sarah, a 28-year-old marketing exec with a story that'll make your blood boil. Before I dive in, hit that like button and subscribe if you're into tales of family drama and sweet, sweet justice. Trust me, you won't want to miss how this unfolds. I'm living in this cozy suburban house with my mom, Linda. Life's pretty good, you know? Then, when I'm 15, my mom marries this guy, Robert. He seems charming enough, successful businessman and all that. He's got a son, Tyler, a couple years younger than me. At first, we're like this perfect little Brady Bunch family. Sarah, honey, what do you think of Robert? Mom asked me one day, her eyes all hopeful. I shrugged, trying to play it cool. He's all right, I guess. Makes you happy, right? She beamed at that. He does, and Tyler's such a sweet boy. I hope you two will be close. Fat chance of that happening. Tyler and I, we were like oil and water. Sure, we were polite, but that was about it. Fast forward to when I'm 25, and things start going south. Mom gets sick. Like, really sick. I'm talking taking time off work to care for her sick. And where's Robert in all this? I'm sorry, Sarah, but this merger is crucial. I can't possibly take time off right now, he'd say, not even looking up from his phone. And Tyler? That kid was always MIA. Sorry, sis. Got plans with the boys tonight. Tell mom I said hi, yeah? I'd bite my tongue, thinking, yeah, sure. I'll pass on your heartfelt message. As mom got worse, I couldn't help but notice Robert acting weird, always on his phone, sneaking off for calls. But I pushed it aside. Mom needed me, and that was all that mattered. The night mom died, I was holding her hand. It was peaceful, but God, it hurt like hell. At the funeral, Robert put on a good show, all teary-eyed and stuff. But something felt off. She would have appreciated all this, Robert said, gesturing at the flowers and mourners. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. All I could think was, would she have appreciated you being glued to your phone while she was dying? After the funeral, I threw myself into work, figured we were all grieving in our own ways. I'd call Robert now and then, but our conversations were always short and awkward. How are you holding up, Sarah? He'd ask, sounding distracted. I'm managing. How about you and Tyler? Oh, we're fine. Just fine. Listen, I've got to run. Take care now. Click. Just like that. I found myself thinking more and more about our old house. All those memories of mom, you know? I kept telling myself I'd visit soon, maybe spend a weekend there, surrounded by her things. I'll go next week, I'd promise myself. But next week turned into next month, and before I knew it, three months had passed. I couldn't believe my eyes. There it was, my childhood home, with a big fat sold sign stuck in the front yard like a knife in my heart. I pulled over, my hands shaking on the steering wheel. This had to be some kind of sick joke, right? I stumbled out of the car, watching strangers carry furniture into my house. My legs felt like jelly as I approached them. Excuse me? I called out, my voice cracking. What's going on here? A woman turned to me, smiling. Oh, we just bought this lovely house. Are you from the neighborhood? I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. I... I grew up here. My stepfather. He lives here. Her smile faded. Oh dear. Mr. Thompson sold us the house last week. He didn't mention any family still living here. I mumbled something and stumbled back to my car, fumbling for my phone. I hit Robert's number, my vision blurring with tears. Robert, what the hell is going on? I demanded when he picked up. His voice was cold, detached. Sarah... I was going to tell you. Tell me what? That you sold my childhood home without even talking to me? As the sole owner after your mother's death, I had every right to sell it. I needed the money for some investments. Investments? What about my memories? What about mom's things? I kept what was important. The rest? Well, you'll have to move on, Sarah. I have... The line went dead. I sat there, stunned, feeling like my world was crumbling around me. Over the next few days, I was a woman possessed. I called every family friend, every neighbor, trying to piece together what had happened. Each conversation left me feeling sicker than the last. Mrs. Johnson from next door dropped the first bomb. Oh, honey, I saw Robert meeting with realtors months ago, even before your poor mother passed. I felt my blood run cold. What? Are you sure? Positive, dear. I thought it was odd, but, well... It wasn't my place to say anything. 
Then came the call with my old friend Emma. We hadn't talked in ages, but she sounded worried. Sarah, I... I saw something the other day. I wasn't sure if I should tell you. My stomach clenched. What is it, Em? I saw Tyler. He was driving this flashy new sports car, like, really expensive looking. The pieces started falling into place, each one hitting me like a slap in the face. Robert selling the house. Tyler's new car. It all made a sick kind of sense. I hung up with Emma and sat there, feeling numb. The house I grew up in, the home where mom took her last breath, sold off so Tyler could have a shiny new toy. The betrayal cut deep, leaving me raw and bleeding. I picked up my phone again, my fingers flying over the keys as I started making calls. If Robert wanted to play dirty, I could play dirty too. He had no idea what he'd just unleashed. Game on, Robert, I muttered to myself. Game on. I knew I couldn't take on Robert alone. This snake had been planning his betrayal for months, maybe even years. I needed a team, people I could trust. First call? My best friend, Michael. Mike, I need your tech wizardry. Can you come over? He must have heard the desperation in my voice. I'm on my way. What's going on, Sarah? I filled him in when he arrived. His face darkened with each detail. That low life, he muttered. Don't worry, we'll nail him. Next, I rang my cousin Olivia. Her paralegal skills would be crucial. Liv, remember how you always said Robert gave you the creeps? You were right. I need your help. She was at my door within the hour, armed with legal pads and a determined glint in her eye. We dove into the investigation, poring over mom's medical records and bank statements. Olivia's trained eye caught discrepancies I might have missed. Sarah, look at this, she pointed to a series of transfers. These don't add up. It's like money was vanishing into thin air. Michael, meanwhile, was working his magic on mom's old laptop and phone. Bingo, he called out. I've recovered a gold mine of deleted emails and texts. You're not going to believe this. He was right. Emails to realtors, quotes from car dealerships, all while mom was fighting for her life in the hospital. My blood boiled. I needed more. I called Aunt Carol, mom's sister who never trusted Robert. Carol, it's Sarah. I need to ask you about mom's will. There was a pause. Oh, sweetie. I was hoping you'd call about this. Something wasn't right there. She told me about the original will how it had vanished after mom's death. Another piece of the puzzle clicked into place. But the real kicker? Evidence of Robert's business trips during mom's illness. Photos of him on beaches, in luxury hotels, with a woman who definitely wasn't my mother. That two-timing piece of... I bit back the words. We've got him, guys. With our mountain of evidence, I contacted a lawyer specializing in estate fraud. Her eyes widened as we laid out our case. This is substantial, she said. We can definitely work with this. But Sarah, are you prepared for how ugly this could get? I nodded, jaw set. Whatever it takes. We hatched a plan, a charity event in Mom's honor, the perfect bait for Robert's ego. He'd never resist the chance to play the grieving widower in public. As we finalized the details, I felt a mix of anticipation and dread. This was it, the culmination of months of pain, betrayal, and hard work. You sure about this? Michael asked, concern etched on his face. I took a deep breath. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. It's time Robert faced the music. Olivia squeezed my hand. We're with you every step of the way. I looked at my team, my friends, my family. For the first time in months, I felt strong, ready. Let's do this, I said, for mom. As we put the finishing touches on our plan, I couldn't help but think of Robert's smug face when he sold our house. That smirk would be wiped off soon enough. The trap was set. The bait was laid. All that was left was for Robert to waltz right into it. Game over, Robert. I whispered to myself. You messed with the wrong family. The day of reckoning finally arrived. I stood in the event hall, my heart pounding as I watched Robert and Tyler schmooze with the guests. They looked so smug, playing the grieving family. If only they knew what was coming. You okay? Michael whispered, squeezing my arm. I nodded, my eyes never leaving Robert. Let's do this. The event started normally. People shared stories about mom. Donations poured in. I almost felt bad for ruining such a nice ceremony. Almost. Then Robert took the stage. All fake smiles and crocodile tears. Linda was the love of my life, he began. Family meant everything to her. That was my cue. 
I caught Michael's eye and gave a slight nod. Suddenly, the screens around the room flickered to life. Robert's voice trailed off as everyone turned to look. There it was, in high definition. Bank statements showing Robert's embezzlement, emails about selling the house, photos of him living it up with his mistress while mom was dying. The room went dead silent. I strode to the podium, gently pushing a shell-shocked Robert aside. I'm sure you're all confused, I said, my voice steady. Let me explain. For the next ten minutes, I laid it all out. Every betrayal, every lie. I watched faces in the crowd shift from confusion to horror to rage. This man, I said, pointing at Robert, sold my childhood home to buy his son a sports car. He stole from my dying mother. He betrayed not just me, but all of you who loved her. Angry murmurs rippled through the crowd. Tyler looked like he was going to be sick. My lawyer stepped up next, outlining the legal proceedings already in motion. The sale of the house will be voided, she announced, and Mr. Thompson here will be facing charges of fraud and embezzlement. Robert, finally snapping out of his shock, grabbed the mic. Sarah, please, he begged. I made mistakes. I was grieving. Grieving? I cut him off. You were planning this before Mom even died. These weren't mistakes, Robert. They were choices. Cruel, calculated choices. Security started moving towards him. Robert's eyes darted around wildly, looking for an escape. Sarah, honey. He tried one last time. I'm sorry. Can't we talk about this? I looked him dead in the eye. No, Robert, we can't. You'll be talking to the police now. As they led him away, I caught Tyler's eye. He looked devastated, confused. For a moment, I almost felt sorry for him. Almost. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. Our legal team tore through Robert's defenses like tissue paper. The house sale was voided. Criminal charges filed. Tyler, to his credit, returned the car and testified against his father. Too little. Too late but it was something. Finally, after what felt like years, I stood in the doorway of my childhood home. My home. Legally and rightfully mine again. As I walked through the familiar rooms, memories of mom washed over me. For the first time since her death, they didn't hurt. They comforted. Sitting in the living room, surrounded by mom's things, I felt peace. The journey had been hell, but I'd come out the other side stronger. I'd faced betrayal, fought back, and won. We did it, Mom, I whispered to the empty room. We got justice. As the sun set outside, casting a warm glow through the windows, I smiled. The future stretched out before me, full of possibilities. I was ready for whatever came next. After all, I'd already survived the worst. Everything from here on out? That was just bonus rounds. The story ends here, but the conversation's just beginning. What would you do if you were in my shoes? Would you go through with exposing Robert at the charity event, or take a different approach to justice? Think about it. Is public humiliation the best revenge, or would you prefer a more private resolution? Maybe you'd choose to forgive and move on, or perhaps you'd fight even harder for what's rightfully yours. Consider the potential fallout. How might this affect your relationship with Tyler? Is there a way to punish Robert without damaging your connection to your stepbrother? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm dying to know how you'd handle this betrayal. Would you go all out for revenge or take the high road? If you enjoyed this wild ride of family drama and want more stories like this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means the world, and it helps me keep bringing you these intense real-life stories. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to read your responses.